Oh yeah, uh, thanks thanks very much for the introduction. So uh, hello everyone, I'm honoured to be here today. So thank you very much for the invitation. I'm going to uh, just share my screen with you all. Oh, actually, uh, one second. I forget, I have to share with audio. So let's do that. Okay. Um, please let me know if you cannot see my slides. So um, just to kick off then, uh, as a member of the ICC, I do believe uh, in the benefits of sharing information like this to improve how we develop best practices for everyone. So that's the reason why I'm going to talk to you today about engagement with e-learning. But I don't want to simply give you a presentation. Instead, I'd like to share more about my e-learning story with you all. So this is more about our own journey with e-learning, how we've overcome a variety of challenges along the way, and how we've developed this then into an award-winning solution. So I'm by no means declaring myself an expert on e-learning. My hope is simply that you'll gain some inspiration from me on how you might go about creating excellent e-learning for your own environment. So to introduce myself very quickly um, and also go into a bit of detail about why I'm talking to you today. As you know, my name is Emma Einan. I co-founded a small digital company called Phantom Factory with my husband, Steve, in 2019. Before that, I've spent many years in IT desk side support roles. These required a mixture of uh, technical knowledge and also customer service. I joined the army as an electronic warfare operator I specialized in telecommunications ranging across the electromagnetic spectrum. And when I rejoined civilian life, I became a group trainer, a technical writer and a SharePoint designer working across various contracts in London. So you could say that my specialist skills are in understanding technology and making that knowledge accessible to others. So what we do. What we do, my partner, Steve, is a leading authority in the Phantom programming language, which is almost exclusively used in the smart buildings industry. This is where buildings and living spaces are becoming computerized. Vast amounts of data are needed to be generated, analyzed and fed into automation systems. All of this is to help save energy and reduce carbon footprints. So as you may imagine, this is a fairly technical industry with lots of buzz terms flying around, prop tech, climate tech, digital twins, data models, building automation across the Internet of Things. And it even borders into space technology as we consider habitats and living spaces on Mars. But with growing legislation around the world for environmental impacts like carbon production, pollution, energy waste, businesses are turning to technology as a necessity for proof of their efforts as well. The problem is that it can be really hard to understand all of the different technologies involved. The global resource pool for workers and specialists is not growing fast enough to accommodate it. So it was at this point where we recognized a need to produce e-learning education. Businesses need their project managers, their energy engineers, developers and business analysts to use more of this leading edge technology, which involves a whole range of data science concepts. So here we are then. We had a need for education on technical topics for a variety of job roles and purposes and to a global audience with mixed experience levels. It was time for us to start designing our e-learning. First of all, though, we needed to settle on a format for our delivery, which begs the question, what exactly is e-learning anyway? There are some very similar terms floating around on the Internet, and these are often interchanged. So we needed to know what exactly we would be producing. And so we had to create our own definitions for the various online training formats as follows online presentations uh, where we think material is simply hosted for online access. Can you learn from a presentation or a demonstration? Absolutely. YouTube, TikTok, they're some of the most popular places to visit and find tutorials on how to do something. Online presentations also cover the whole range of digital communications. 
audiobook libraries, videos, visual imagery, pre-recorded live video calls. This is great if you want to learn how to cook a recipe or read about advanced maths or, like me, learn how to change the side that your fridge door opens on. But for technical and in-depth topics, it can require a lot more, especially when you need to measure the outcome of the learning. So the student's understanding for uh, perhaps gaining some awards certification. This is where we consider online training is different, which usually involves some sort of web session and a leading trainer. This is useful when students need to be involved to ask questions, show feedback on understanding. So it's usually delivered in live online sessions and maybe a mixture of self-study from online resources. Training usually requires a kind of written test at the end of the delivery. So this is great for people who speak the same language, maybe have the same learning abilities. It can work to the same pace. But what about delivering training across the world, which is across time zones, across schedules, to a whole mixed range of people who learn at different speeds? This is hard to accommodate also with a small team like ours in just one time zone. So we have to consider that students need to dedicate meeting times from their schedules, which can also be really inconvenient, especially when they're in locations like Canada or Singapore or Australia. So electronic learning or e-learning is what we consider the pure digital experience for self-paced learning on demand. It must have interactive elements and questions, which can then demonstrate a measurable learning outcome. Lots of companies use this as an onboarding tool uh, for perhaps new employees where they need to deliver basic information and not commit a lot of training resource to it. So health and safety, for example, is a very popular topic. We have to sit through lots of e-learning uh, interactions. The benefits for us um, in using a purely digital format then would be that it would be easy for language translations, that it could be made available on demand at any time with an automated enrollment process, and we could use our web and software development skills to maintain and develop it with just a small team. So our students can learn to their own schedules, their own pace, and it's perfect for us. But although uh, features can vary between e-learning platforms, how the content then gets laid out follows quite a similar pattern. Some basic imagery, some text, some limited interactive elements, and uh, to showcase this, I found some examples of different e-learning pages from around the internet. Uh, we can see in this screen here, uh, they're clickable um, images. And if we go to the next one, we usually find that there's some sort of button to mark progress through the course after the exercise. And this example, which is a rather dreadful design I found, um, before we, before we even start to look at the graphic design and the user interfaces, we need to think about what kind of platform will support our training needs. But what are those needs? The question is, how do we compose our training content to make sure that our technical content will be really understood? So for this, I went back to my group training routes and thought about training techniques. I consider experiential training to be the most effective, which is learning by doing. To award certificates to such a mixed range audience, we needed a solid training method that we could rely on to reinforce understanding. Because the last thing that we want is for people to skim read material, guess the answers, and even worse, get stuck. So we developed our own process or learning cycle to follow in order to consolidate our education in the best way and give us confidence in what we're building. And then we thought about our syllabus. So when we went to design our syllabus for the first course to figure out how to use this cycle, how to lay out information on the page and what features we're going to need in our digital designs, um, I actually use Excel. Um, I design and maintain the syllabus content for each of my courses in Excel, which helps to keep 
everything relevant and true. So first of all, as you might see on this uh, screen, at the top there, we try and set our overall course objectives. This helps us identify which modules of training we're then going to need in the course. Then we break down each of the modules into all of the learning topics that we need to cover. Defining our topics then into individual pages is easier because you, you also need to think about the key points that you want to deliver in those topics. And we wanted each key point to go through our learning cycle. So depending on the complexity of the learning point, sometimes it does make more sense to apply the cycle to a whole topic page. But the number of these learning points is really what defines the number of the topic pages that you would put onto your e-learning screen. So we can put our students through the cycle of consolidation with each point each time. If our course size is too big, then perhaps our course objectives are too ranging and too big, and we need to review those as well. So we went through this exercise, but as we were putting together the syllabus, we realized that our audience needed different things. Uh, we would be teaching the use, in this case, of the same data analytics platform to people who use it in very different ways. So it would be very easy to simply say, well, look, here are the technical details for this platform, and this is what we need to communicate out. But we thought a lot about who we would be communicating with. And in our experience, it helps to set the right language level and the tone with our writing style, because we're still talking to our students after all. Programmers, for example, may get annoyed with a slow pace of non-technical content and vice versa with non-technical project managers. Will we be informal and friendly or formal and authoritative? Who will respond in the best way and engage more? In much the same way, we thought about the end qualification for our audience. Would programmers need to demonstrate the same knowledge of using the data platform as a project manager? So we made the decision to create training for each job role that needs to use the technology. We found that creating a syllabus is intrinsically linked to the audience need and the qualification they would need to earn by demonstrating their new knowledge. So a syllabus identifies the learning points, gives us the structure and gives consolidation. Identifying our audience helps to keep the content relevant and sets our communication style. And defining the qualification points helps us to really stay on track and design the very best questions and ex exercises for consolidation. And I just want to highlight at this point as well that when it comes to setting assessments for your course, for your certification, this should only be done on relevant key points that have already been consolidated because it's vital you don't introduce anything new or worse, try and trick students at this point of the course. So, so far, I've been looking at all of the technical aspects of putting e-learning together. And now I needed to think about the human aspect of it all, the user experience for e-learning. After lots of bad experiences with undergoing e-learning in other companies, we were determined that our e-learning should be engaging, motivating, and memorable. So question is, how? First of all, the most important way to hit those targets is to make it easy. Not easy to whiz through, but easy to learn. So um, this can be a real key factor with engagement in particular, because if something's too hard or too much effort, people will switch off rather quickly. And this has a lot to do with natural learning styles. Our visual learners, love examples and illustrations. We already had an idea of this at the start. So we made a point of hiring an in-house illustrator into our team from the beginning. Much like the principles taught through the ISTC, training illustrations are key for explaining complicated things like airline safety cards. So in our training, we make sure to design images that should be easily understood and also easily viewed. So for example, people who might have color blindness. 
all of our images must also be of a high enough quality to resize onto different digital screens. And this can involve various technical skills over a range of media files. To cater for our auditory learners, we can actually do a lot with sound in our e-learning too. So to be more accessible to auditory learners, our videos have clear, slow narration. This helps learners in other countries, especially America. Would you believe that? Uh, we also take extra care to create and add easy listening backing tracks to add a better user experience because we found that music can have a really big effect on moods and energy during the training. And it can certainly increase engagement with tutorials, especially when they're longer. As you may imagine, there can be a lot of text and it can be hard to get through it all. So creating different styles of text, call outs, paragraphs, they can all really help to break up the text and illustrate important points. So if we remember, it's not about making it pretty, it's about making it really easy to take in. This is also how we talk to the students, thinking about the right language style, jargon level, and every whether we refer to everything in the first, the second, or the third person. Above all, we insist on being consistent and grammatically correct with our language. Otherwise, we may evoke some negative emotions in students, and that can be very hard to reverse as well. And to include our practical learners, most learning platforms can only accommodate this side with various on-screen exercises and questions, clickable buttons, for example. <clears throat> Excuse me a second. So for us, this is actually where we wanted to excel and provide a more experiential type of e-learning. We found it hard to find any one solution that could deliver the full user experience that we wanted to offer. So as software de developers, we decided to create our own e-learning platform as well, allowing us to innovate and add any features that we want to dream up. Importantly though, it means we can also integrate the technology that we want people to train in for real practice. For example, as you can see on this screen, in our data analytics course, we host an online data analytics instance for students to use. So they can log into a web page. They find the actual data that we're asking for in the on-screen exercises. So it means that our students use the data platform that they're training in to actually train in using the data platform. So we looked at how to make engagement easy and interactive for our students, but how to keep motivating them to learn until the very end. To boost this, we added gamification and achievements with real world benefits. More completed exercises mean that more achievements and more tree points get donated to our charity partner, TreeAid. So our hope here is to encourage and motivate students to do more and at the same time, they're planting trees to combat climate change, which funny enough, is the very thing that they're learning the technology for as well. But doing more hopefully means that they get a better understanding and remember more too, even if some of it is by accident. So enough of my slides, I'm going to have a look now at a live demonstration of what this has built for us so far. So uh, if I can pop this onto the screen. This is our own e-learning platform with a live course about data modeling with Project Haystack. This is something we were commissioned to do by the Project Haystack board. Now, um, a typical training page, let's see where I got to, like this one, shows our clean layouts. It has an easy to use navigation menu that's collapsible. It shows progress and it even shows where there are tree points available to collect. We can see that this topic page is all about the differences between strings and symbols. And as we uh, scroll down, you can see that we've used different textual layouts 
and paragraphs with all sorts of syntax formatting. We show examples in the text format and with high quality illustrations. And if I go further down, you'll see that we've designed a range of call out boxes with simple icons to emphasize points or reference links. So following our cycle of learning, we may like to add demonstration videos once we've introduced some learning. Here we've used a simple high quality photograph, which suits this learning point better. So note that now that we've delivered some learning, we also now offer a feedback option. Here we are. We've uh, added this so that people can, can do a thumbs up or a thumbs down to give us an indication if they enjoyed a particular piece of content. And they can also send us feedback on something to say. So they can also, these are fantastic for getting feedback on uh, mistakes or perhaps typos. And there we go. We can act on this then because this fires off an email to our team and we can have a look and uh, review various points of our e-learning to see where we can improve and where we can improve engagement. So to consolidate this uh, learning point, this learning topic, we've also got an easy exercise to interact with. All of our exercises are completely optional and they come with hints to give extra help and guidance. And you can see that there is still a tree point available for answering this exercise. So the exercise will then give us feedback on whether we understand this point by getting the answer right or wrong. At the end of the topic page, we make sure to summarize the learning points from the topic in a nutshell. So this consolidates all of the learning points that you need to take away. And you can also find them easily if you need to go back and refresh your memory on different topics. We can also now mark the page as done, which will move the progression forward. So this is all very nice and easy, right? But what about memory retention? Would you remember that learning point after a day or a week or six months? If you enjoy something, you're far more likely to engage with it and remember it. So we needed to make our training more fun. So how do you do this without just using standard internet memes and old jokes? Our secret source, well, maybe not so secret, but storytelling is powerful and more organizations are adopting this into everything. So for example, if you have flown with an airline lately, you may have noticed how the safety video is now a comedy sketch or a celebrity showcase. Storytelling and narratives, if they're effectively used, can absolutely make training more enjoyable and more memorable over a longer term. So perfect, let's do it. As they say, go big or go home. So we created a storytelling universe to set to our e-learning. Welcome to our alpha colony on Mars. This gives us a simplified fictional suite of smart buildings, which are just perfect for us to create easy training scenarios and fun narratives. We actually used real life NASA missions as a basis for our Mars sites and storylines. So for example, if you can see the ice cone facility at the bottom of the uh, image, as part of our ice drilling operations that we train with in our training in the Arcadia Quadrangle. But this is actually based on a mission that's been mapped out by NASA already. Also, our characters like Glitch, our training robot here, can talk to our students in different tones and styles. Some of them even need help from students to solve challenges and problems in the training. So we believe we've created a more immersive experience, bringing students into the storylines and using real technology to solve the training challenges. And let's not forget to mention, of course, that space is generally very exciting. Oh, and I will, I'll have to play you a video 
from a different page, I'm afraid. I'm going to play you a very quick video. <laughs> Uh, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, let me move this along. So that's our video. You can find that on YouTube. Just uh, type in hashtag Mars2052 uh, and you can watch that in more detail if you're interested. Um, but let's see how we apply this storytelling uh, aspect to our e-learning now. So this is our Axon programmer uh, course that we have. This is also live. Um, so what you can see from the very beginning is that we now set a narrative from the very start with the reason to do the training. We call these training missions and they're all set by, oh, what have I done there? Sorry, clicking the wrong mouse button. Um, they're all set by our kernel at Earth Command. When we go into the first module page, then we introduce the characters that our students are going to be working with. This draws them into the story. As you can see, we've got Glitch reporting in, we're introduced to Glitch, and you've got a reason to do the training. And then we set the training objectives, which is probably the most important part. If we skip to a topic page, what we can see is that our story narrative helps us to set the theme for our training illustrations so they can be a lot more consistent based on Mars. And using our characters, we can set challenges within each module of training. This structures uh, a narrative around why you would need to learn each of the topics in that module. Here we've got Astrid, she's got a problem with the computer system and she needs to um, she needs to sort out this readout. It's not listing the items properly. If we skip through the topics, all of these topics then contribute something towards that challenge that helps you at the end to find the exercise. Where is it? Here we go. And you get a consolidatory story exercise. And this brings together all the practice and brings you back into the storyline so that you feel like you've had um, a reason to do all of that learning. So what the uh, practical aspect that we designed is for, for each course, we design a different practical aspect. For the programming course, we created our very own programming console so we can actually practice with the real Axon code that we're teaching. If I skip to the story exercise, I'll give you an example of that. And this is uh, an interaction. It acts exactly like the technology platform that our students will be working with in real life. 
And if we were to answer the question, if I get this wrong on purpose, we also uh, have different outcomes for correct and incorrect answers. So here, Astrid, now she's still left with the same problem because we haven't fixed it. But if I were to put in the correct answer, and I've got an achievement, Astrid's now very happy because we fixed the problem that she was having. So if I just go back up to the top of this page again. Basically, we can now go through our cycle of learning. We introduce the learning. We apply learning to scenarios and examples. We give students the ability then to practice the learning with the exercises and get feedback and analysis from those exercises and even analyze their learning uh, with the nutshell summary. So we're trying to incorporate all of the learning styles, all of the digital communication methods to the best ability and bring in a user experience with the storytelling. But I realized, or we realized, that these cartoons may not be to everybody's taste because we do have very textual learners or very factual learners. So this is why we also designed a story mode toggle and we can just turn it all off too. But I like the stories. Now that we've finished uh, a module, we also now have a checkpoint quiz. And the reason with the quizzes is because we need to measure the outcome of the learning so far. But we can use these quizzes uh, and exercises as training techniques as well, because quite often you might remember a question that you got wrong the first time around, more so than the others that you got right first time. So you've seen a sample of our finished e-learning designs, but how do we know that they work? Well, all of our courses offer the opportunity for feedback. So these get posted directly to our public website. And I'm going to take you over to our live website now, and we can have a look at what our learners think. I'll choose the Axon Programmer course. So I'll just have a quick skim through. And like I say, these are all live and public on the site. We don't filter these. Um, so Corey really likes how this demonstrates the actual application into the platform that we're teaching. Fantastic. Jan likes the uh, practice questions, being able to practice everything, and it helps him to remember. Manuel, he really likes how everything is structured and also really enjoys the story mode because it gives him a sense of purpose. Uh, scroll down a bit more. Florin really likes the uh, uh, practical aspect of the training. And Javier really liked the exercises as well. So the practical aspect seems to be uh, really successful with people. Uh, William now has the confidence to work in the actual data system. So he feels it's really been applied. And Wilhelm really likes the feedback on errors. And as the last, last two, Jacob just loves the course. He's given us an essay on how he loves it. But um, if we scroll down here, Michael just loved the robot and he liked the jokes. So what does this tell us? This tells us that we've had a fantastic response to the training. It seems to hit all of our targets, which were engagement, motivation, and memory retention. And our increased sales gave us a good indication of this as well. So in summary, we consider our Phantom Factory e-learning to be successful in our chosen field. We've been lucky enough to win a number of awards for our innovations with the e-learning, which also includes an IST Merit Award, no less. We like to think that this is because we've paid attention to the quality of the e-learning content and the displays, the user experience about making learning easy for all the different learning styles, including the real practical elements, 
and providing a unique storytelling experience to help our learners feel like a part of the Alpha Colony stories. So that's the end of today's presentation. And I really hope that you've enjoyed what I've had to say and that some of these key points have been useful. For any further queries, feel free to contact me. I love to talk, as you can tell. And I, uh, I believe that I'm, I'm now able to take some questions if you have any. <laughs>